Hey all and thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be exploring a famous and bustling airport located off of West O'Hare Avenue on the northwest side of Chicago, Illinois. That, at 7,627 acres, holds the title of being the seventh largest airport in the whole of the U.S. Headed by the Chicago Department of Aviation and surrounded in a number of chilling local legends and ghost stories, are you prepared to brave the history and hauntings of O'Hare? International Airport Initially, in 1926, around the same time as the establishment of the Chicago Municipal Airport, now the Midway International Airport, it was quickly realized the growing metro of Chicago would require more airport space moving forward. O'Hare's historic roots would begin to grow within a site called Orchard Place, which had previously held a German-American farming community, and that, through World War II, would be utilized to manufacture Douglas C-54 Skymasters. During this period, this particular plant would produce 655 C-54s in total, which made up more than half of the C-54s ever completed, and its attached airfield, from which completed aircraft were launched, was referred to simply as Douglas Airport and featured four separate 5,500-foot runways. This site would also host the Army Air Force's 803rd Specialized Depot, which would be utilized to store captured enemy aircraft, and portions of this impressive collection would even later be acquired by the Smithsonian Institution's National Air and Space Museum. Following the conclusion of World War II in 1945, Douglas's contract was ended, and the complex would be re-established as the Orchard Field Airport, and later the same year, Chicago Mayor Edward Kelly would form a board under which a new aviation facility site would be selected. After careful consideration, in 1946, this board would purchase a majority of Orchard Field, with the military remaining on a much smaller chunk of the property. And in 1949, the site would be renamed as O'Hare Airport, in honor of Edward Butch O'Hare, Medal of Honor recipient and the first of the U.S. Navy's renowned flying aces. From 1950 to 1953, namely through the height of the Korean War, the U.S. Air Force would utilize the old airfields, during which time there was still no commercial services. In 1955, scheduled passenger services were started. In 1958, O'Hare's first international terminal was opened, and by 1959, the complex had been expanded to 7,200 acres and had welcomed new hangars, terminals, parking facilities, and more. By 1960, O'Hare's role as an active fighter base had diminished, just as commercial traffic began picking up. In 1997, the site would be acquired by the Chicago Department of Aviation, with the reserve base closed. And in 1998, O'Hare International Airport would accommodate more than 20 million passengers, and would claim the title of being the busiest airport on the planet. In 2001, the Chicago Department of Aviation would launch plans for a series of modernizations of the site, including a reconfiguration of the airfield, which were all approved in 2005. And though this project would face multiple pushbacks up until 2011, the department would soldier on and would complete all intended workloads by 2021. In the present, O'Hare remains open for air travel and continues to grow and expand in an effort to match ever-rising demands. Over its lengthy existence, O'Hare International Airport has been associated with a number of frightening fables and accounts of the otherworldly, with popular tales seemingly passed from generation to generation. Some of said stories claim supernatural activity experienced across the facility is a result of the former Rest Haven and St. Johannes cemeteries, which were moved to make way for one of the field's new runways, while others, that ghostly happenings are tied to the many who have passed from natural causes around the terminal and on flights, and over the years, both staff and travelers have reported doors that open and close on their own, lights that flick from on to off by themselves, leaving all present in darkness, alarms that sound without cause, and strange malfunctions with personal electronics. Several informal investigations have yielded high EMF levels, chilling EVPs from empty spaces, and extreme temperature fluctuations, and airport employees and flight crews have documented sighting full-bodied apparitions in clothing spanning the eras, often wandering the runways at night that have even been responsible for delayed flights. One more popular tale that's almost more tragic than it is chilling tells of the crash of American Airlines Flight 191, which occurred on May 25, 
5th of 1979, and during which a DC-10 wrecked less than a mile from the end of the runway, resulting in the deaths of all 271 passengers and crew members aboard, along with two others who were on the ground below it. Following this disaster, heat from the wreck vaporized all human remains, to a point at which they could not be recovered. Just nights later, residents at a nearby trailer park began reporting encounters with ghostly figures, phantom knocking at their doors, and blood-curdling screams heard on the winds. And over time, the local police department would begin receiving calls concerning strange lights flitting about the crash site. To date, those braving the area have described disembodied voices, unnatural hot and cold spots, the phantom smells of jet fuel and of burning cloth, hair and flesh, and of instances in which normally well-behaved dogs act erratically or even with aggression. Lastly, a number of witness accounts from those who live near O'Hare have told of instances in which they've answered a knock at their front door to find an older man in their yard who proceeds to search frantically for his luggage for seconds before vanishing into thin air. And along adjacent roads, motorists have described sighting a burned-looking entity in a suit that appears to be so hot it's still smoking, who always mutters dazedly about being late for a connecting flight before fading into nothingness. Thanks for tuning in for this Paranormal Pit Stop. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.